There are many bad and good looking armor sets in Skyrim, and finding the right one for you can be challenging. That's why today I've cut out the crap and left you with what I believe to be the top 20 best looking heavy armor sets in the game. And since the majority of you appreciated my opinions on the last armor ranking, you can rest assured knowing that you're in impeccable hands. So sit back, conjure up some sweet rolls and cheese, and let's get into it wizards. The Star Fair Armor is an alternative armor from the Croatian Club that allows your throat to be slit. Like it's either the helmet's fault for being too short, or I've got an insanely long neck. And last time I checked, I didn't look like a Brachiosaurus. The icy blue Star plates are just as you'd expect, and are interwoven with strips of fox fur. And the fur's not just some fluffy trim either, and forms sleek collars and cuffs that hug your body like the embrace of a friendly yeti. It's sleek and brutal, warm and cold at the same time time. But why rock this when there's the Star Rim Heavy Armor? Simply put, you don't. If this ranking was based on how friendly the armor sets look, then this would be close to rock bottom. The Orcish armor isn't for the faint-hearted, and is probably the hardest looking armor set out there, perfectly aligned for the brute force nature of the Orcs. For starters, the cuirass is a spiked monstrosity, and the helmet wouldn't win any most likely to attend tea party awards, but at least you won't lose your head this time. However, mobility, never heard of it. Orcish armor is about as subtle as a troll in a china shop, and sneaking past guards is about as successful as convincing a skeever to go vegan. But the term clunky encompasses most of the heavy armor sets, I suppose. It's just how clunky are you willing to go. There is something oddly charming about its blunt practicality though. Its armor has seen things, bashed things, and probably gotten dented in a few tavern brawls. It's the armor of heroes who solve problems with their war hammers, not their wits, and that's kind of badass in its own right. The Ancient Nord Armor is the true armor of heroes, and it's got history written in every nick and tear. When you don this set as a Nord, you're essentially wearing the legacy of your ancestors, like a badass family heirloom. It sends shivers down my spine every time I put it on, as its ancient iron plates tell tales of a thousand battles and meat spilt. But at the same time, you are sharing your fashion sense with the undead, which isn't exactly drop dead gorgeous. But maybe that's not a grave concern. Okay, Okay, that's enough undead puns. Azidar's armor also shares the same set, with the bonus of having some cool enchantments on top. So you're better off going for that one, unless you plan to slap a few of your own enchantments on. And while it looks semi-decent on male characters, the female version looks even better, with an exposed back and a superior looking helmet. Ah, Dragonplate Armor, the pinnacle of Skyrim's blacksmithing scene, outclassing the likes of Dwarven and Ebony Armor in defense, but unfortunately not in style. Yeah, I've got a love-hate relationship with this one. On the one hand, I love how fierce it looks, especially the helmet with those wicked horns, but on the other hand, it's beefy as hell. And I get it, you know, dragon bones are bulky, but at least give me some room to turn my head. The shoulder pauldrons are without a doubt the worst part of this getup, and those dragon's feet, if that's what they are, are humongous. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but that's the way I see it. The rest of this set is fine though, although the cuirass is very long and stretches down your legs, and I feel like moving in that thing would be like treading through quicksand with a 40 pound backpack. Not nice. Whenever I look at this armor, I think of Uthgur the Unbroken, and how many times I whooped her ass in the Bannered Mare. It's forged from sheets of cold hard steel, and is the quintessential knight's attire. It's the kind of armor that tells a story before you even swing a sword. And it better be a sword, because if you wield any other weapon with this suit, you're doing it a disservice. However, that helmet may justify the use of a particular hammer, if you know what I mean. I like how they shadow the eyes in mystery too, daring anyone to challenge your steely gaze. Overall, it's just super clean to look at, especially with the engravings, and the fur complements it nicely too. 
Her hand armor is from the Ghosts of the Tribunal creation. It originally featured in the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind and was worn by the hands of Almalexia, who were the best and most loyal personal guards of Almalexia. I originally had it way higher up, but upon further examination, it got progressively worse. Like, I like it when an armor implements colors, and this one does just that, but perhaps it's just not the right colors. That red skirt, for example, could have been a tad brighter maybe, and I don't think that green scarf around the waist improves the situation. The patterns and Daedric letters, however, are pretty nice, but the rings at the bottom make it feel like a curtain. Like, I'm sure the missus would like that in the bedroom, but then it does look a bit hippie for her tastes. The shoulder pauldrons are rather big too, like the wings of a mountain banshee. You know, those birds from Avatar. Great movies if you haven't seen them, by the way, and I'm looking forward to the third. The helmet resembles a Spartan helmet, which is pretty cool, but the outfit as a whole seems seems a bit feminine to me. I mean, it does say it in the name, I suppose, so it's better on slender female characters. When I first saw this armor, my jaw dropped, but then I scrolled my eyes down and saw a skirt. Yep, they went and butchered it. It's not terrible, mind you, but if we'd seen a full cuirass down to the boots, you would have heard me talk about it later. So what do I like about it? Well, everything else. The set as a whole takes heavy inspiration from Roman centurion armor, but the colors are even better. Black and gold, especially with the red accents, is pure perfection. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The shield, gorgeous. The cape, glorious. The boots, superb. The gauntlets, pretty nice. But the helmet, my god, the helmet. Look at that thing. This might be the best looking headgear in the game for me, especially with the dragon perched on the top. How cool is that? And it's not just for protection, for that red diamond is a symbol of the Empire's might. But we can't forget about that skirt. If you watch my ranking on the light armor sets, then you'll know that I like Stalrum armor a lot, and I feel the same way about the heavy armor version. But if I had to choose between one or the other, I'd go with the light armor version, as I prefer its helmet and the sleeker design. Not to mention that it comes with a shield, and the heavy armor does not. No hate on this version though, after all, it's number 13 out of a possible 39, and does a fine job with those polished glaciers. The Dawnguard heavy armor goes in hard, and is a badass vampire slaying getup. The Karas has two variants coming in either brown or grey, and I prefer the latter. It matches the color scheme on the helmet very nicely, and makes you look like a walking tank. The chest piece is like a fortified wall too, and I much prefer how it continues down the legs and splits in the middle. Kinda like a dressing gown, but it also has a split in the back, so you don't have to take it off to drop the kids off at the pool, which is very practical. Though given its flexibility, it's not the kind of armor you sneak into a vampire lair with. No, you kick down the den door, shouting, bring it on, bloodsuckers. And that's what I admire about it. It's brutality. Every curve, every spike, every glint of silver tells a story. It's the armor of those who stand against the darkness, who face down ancient evils with nothing but steel and courage. And for that, it gets my respect. Now, a lot of you wizards in the comments said that a particular armor was your favorite, so forgive me when I say this, but it's up next. The ebony armor is like the goth kid of the heavy armor family, with sharp edges, brooding shadows, and sleek curves. But while it does everything to a pretty good standard, it just doesn't stand out if you know what I mean. Unless, of course, you're the 7 foot 3 ebony warrior. For starters, the texture on the armor could have been darker, like obsidian, and that would have brought out the grey accent some more on the edges, making it more foreboding. But instead, we're left with some sort of washed out look, like the one time your mum accidentally put your the best hoodie to hang out on the line for too long after washing, and let the sun wreck it. Thankfully, I do my own washing now. But hey, some people might dig that look, but not me, especially when it comes to armor. It's gotta look sharp and pristine. The helmet just looks a bit shitty too, I've gotta say, but slap the mask of Clavicus Vile or the Nightingale hood on, and it's an instant upgrade. One can swap the cuirass for the ebony mail too, but then you just end up looking like a kid. And although I just ranted my ass off about this set, there's still a lot I admire about it, especially when it comes to layering and those overlapping plates are fantastic, which very few armor sets do to such a high standard. So that's why ebony armor is in the mix. 
If a steampunk gladiator raided a scrapyard, you'd have yourself some dwarven plate armor. This is another alternative armor creation that comes with other shield, helmet, and additionally no gauntlets. Like what are they playing at? Did the creators just forget, or couldn't they be asked? Because to me, it seems like a half done job, and I definitely want to finish it off. But thankfully, they did remember to give us some boots, which is very generous of them. Now with this gear, or lack of it, you might be questioning why I've ranked it so high. But don't forget, I'm a wizard. And I'm sorry, but that gold complementing the purple is magnifique. It gives off that regal, luxurious look, and it's still got that certain rugged charm to it, which I like. And if it's a little bit chilly on the extremities, just stick on the original dwarven helmet and gauntlets, and you're good to go. But if you want some uniques, then the Visage of Mazond is pretty cool, which comes with a steam attack. And don't forget about the Brawler's Dwarven Gauntlets. The Nordic car of armor bears the mark of a true Nord. Bears, do you get it? Because of the helmet, never mind. You could wear this to a heavy metal concert and fit right in. It's that hard. But you might just kill someone in the mosh pit. Like the ebony armor, I love the layering on this cuirass, and it's gotta be one of the best looking chess pieces out there. It oozes a brutal beauty that appeals to the inner Nord in many of us, and the carvings dance across the surface, whispering tales of ancient battles and mythical creatures. There's even a section covering the groin that varies in size depending on what you're packing, which is why yours is small and mine is extra long and thick. And spin her around and there's a lot of fur covering that booty, which is a shame as I would have liked to have seen some more metal back there. But overall, great job. As you should all know by now, your wizard's a fan of sleeker looking armor, and this one is sleek. The ebony spell knight armor comes from the spell knight armor creation, and is the epitome of arcane badassery. It's like the love child of a sleek jet black panther, and a powerful battle mage. The plates are expertly crafted, following the curves of the body, and the curves are accented by intricate gold trims and rivets, bringing it to life. And don't get me started on the purple clothing and brown leather. It's like they took the best parts of heavy armor and mage robes and mashed them into one glorious outfit. That deep rich ebony is just magnetic too, and although it's dark and mysterious, it still manages to convey a sense of power and nobility. If you're playing a battle mage, you should look no further. Ah, the Human Lobster. There are two versions of this set which look identical, the Farmer Heavy Armor and the Farmer Hardened Armor. But the former offers more defense and is slightly lighter, so make sure you pick up that one. Now love me or hate me, but I like this getup. It's just so unique and completely different to any other armor in Skyrim. For starters, it's undeniably creepy, probably because it's crafted from the hide of Quarus by Degenerated Farmer. And as a result, it's got this unsettling settling insectile vibe going on that will give your foes the heebie-jeebies. Just check out these Quarus tentacles extending over the shoulders. Yuck. You'll even find the head of a Quarus attached to your face. And just on that, how an oblivion do you see? After all, we wizards have a pair of good working eyes, I hope, unlike the farmer, so vision is an absolute necessity, and I'm not seeing any holes. And if that does keep you up at night, then there is the Shellbug helmet, which for me is oddly one of the best looking helmets in the game, and still counts towards the farmer heavy armor. So matching set bonus, activated. The Steel Spell Knight armor is the brother to the Ebony Spell Knight armor, and out of the three variations, this one's my favorite. The bright red and shiny steel stand out more, and those brighter tones make it feel more dangerous, as a knight should be. But it's worth noting that it isn't quite as strong as the Ebony Spell Knight armor, but that's what this is for. The Indoral armor originates from the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind and is worn exclusively by the Ordinators, a military order of knights under the Tribunal Temple. And now, with the addition of the Ghost of the Tribunal creation, you can wear it in Skyrim. Some might find it over the top, but that's the beauty of it. You're a champion of a powerful religious order, and it's got that Chosen One vibe, you know? The gold and its symmetrical details are killer, and with the hints of regal purple throughout, it's already won my vote. The helmet's like a samurai kabuto, amplified to divine proportions, with a flowing blue scarf that drapes down your back like a spectral river. 
the pauldrons are an eye catcher as well, adding another layer of imposing bulk, but still somehow managing to be elegant at the same time. And while you may be big on top, you're not as big down below, giving you the best of both worlds. Think warrior meets parkour master, agile enough to flip over a dragon's breath and stab it in the gullet. And the best part, it's not a skirt. If you watch my light armor sets ranking, you'll know that I have a soft spot for the Divine Crusader armor. And no, it's not because I played Oblivion, because I haven't yet unfortunately, but I would like to one of these days. That said, I am looking forward to Sky Oblivion, which hopefully will be with us by next year, and you can definitely expect your wizard to be covering that. But back to the armor. I like this set for how pristine it looks, and despite being a wizard who generally prefers his light armor over heavy, I actually prefer the heavy armor version. It's got more steel and therefore feels more badass, like a knight in shining armor. The helmet's better too, and it definitely beats those chicken wings. Overall, it's classy, clean, and sturdy. If a blacksmith and a clockmaker got hammered while browsing a junkyard of gears, pipes and scrap metal, this bad boy might just be their beautiful boozy outcome. The dwarven armor is hands down one of the coolest looking heavy armor sets in Skyrim, and the fact that this steampunk suit of mismatched plates is held together by the sheer ingenuity of its vanished creators makes it even cooler. I love the ruggedness of it and how everything is bolted together. It makes you feel like a mini dwarven centurion ready to kick some ass. And it's not all junkyard scraps either, because the metal is mighty smooth and intricately etched with geometric patterns. The helmet is something else too, and if you want to act like a mini dwarven centurion, then there's the visage of Mazunt with its steam attack. And while you're at it, why not swap the gauntlets for the brawler's gauntlets, and the shield for the ethereal shield. Now we're talking. Oh, I used to wear this armor a heck of a lot back in my early Skyrim days, as probably most of us did. Daedric armor is the epitome of edgy, demonic badassery, and unapologetically owns that aesthetic. It's got sharp angles everywhere, from the shoulder pauldrons that could double as saw blades, to the helmet that looks like a predator's maw, ready to devour the face of anyone who dares oppose you. And let's not forget the red accents, like the pulsating heart of Lorcan himself. It's a walking middle finger to subtlety, and it's like the armor's channeling the power of oblivion, and that's freaking cool to me. And with everything going on, it's not even ugly, it's intentionally menacing, absolutely nailing that dark, otherworldly vibe. From the intricate glyphs etched onto the metal, to the spikes adorning the gauntlets, there's always something new to catch your eye. So whether you hate it or love it, there's no denying that the Daedric armor makes a statement. And if you want to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, and look like Shadow the Hedgehog, you should look no further. If you asked the younger Welsh wizard to rank these armors, Daedric would undoubtedly be top. But as I've matured, I've learned to appreciate the finer details. Yeah, Daedric may look badass and the most intimidating, but that's not exactly practical when I just want a casual pint of mead and a sweet roll in the Bannered Mare. Because by the time I'm ready to pack up, I'll have developed sciatica and deep vein thrombosis. And the same goes for most heavy armor sets, unfortunately. They don't look functional and are only suited for combat and bashing skulls. And the thing is, I crave that versatility which is why the Blades armor is my favorite. This glorious piece of kit is without a doubt one of the sleekest and most iconic heavy armor sets in Skyrim. It exudes a sense of regality and purpose befitting the elite warriors of the Blades. It's not flashy or over-designed like many of the heavy armor sets out there, but that's exactly what makes it so damn appealing, and it strikes a perfect balance between protection and practicality. When wearing this armor, you feel like a samurai, and that becomes even even more apparent when wielding a blade's katana, or the ebony blade. The suit sits on your character like a second skin, with the cuirass a muscular piece that hugs the chest and tapers down at the waist. And before anyone asks, yes, there is a six pack under there. The shoulders are broad and angular, providing excellent protection without looking bulky, and the helmet is a thing of beauty. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's even got a golden dragon on top, which I assume is Akatosh, with its tongue sticking out to perfectly guard your big ass beak. 
how cool is that? But it's not just the coolness factor that makes the Blade's armor fantastic, because as I've mentioned, the design is incredibly versatile. It looks equally at home in a snowy mountain range as it does in a dark dungeon or a bustling city. And whether you're a wizard, a sword and board kind of guy, or an assassin, the Blade's armor has got you covered. And for that reason, it's my number one.